welcome to our vegetable production series with Sakata. Today we're talking cucurbits, also known as pumpkins. Um, specifically pollination, what's important uh, during this stage, what do you need to look out for, how does it happen. Also look out for our other um, videos that we did specifically on why the plastic sheets are important as well as your plant population um, and when you uh, um, what you need to look out for transplant when you transplant the seedlings and so forth but today pollination Johan how are you doing find yourself Andre no good good right okay so we're standing here um, we've got a bunch of butternuts um, yes that, that you guys are basically trialing and so forth but when we look at the stage where they are now um, they're busy flowering um, First of all, let's start with why is pollination important? Okay, basically uh, the cucurbits, all the, all the cucurbits, as you mentioned, the pumpkins, the butternuts, uh, the baby marrows, all of that, uh, they need pollination for even, uh, for, to be able to set fruit. If there's no pollination, there's no reason for that plant to um, grow that fruit. Uh, and that's what we ultimately want. So pollination, if you don't have pollination, you don't have fruit set. So let me understand this quickly, um, if, if I understand this correctly. A plant, doesn't matter what plant it is, their main aim is to reproduce at the end of the day. Yes. So, um, and they make a fruit. When that fruit is pollinated, it basically will make seeds. Yes. And that ensures uh, um, that it can, can reproduce at the end of the day. If it does not pollinate, then it doesn't have seeds, then there's no reason for the plant to yes. put effort then, into that then fruit. Then basically the, the plant will abort that fruit. Cucurbits is, is different in the sense, uh, for, for instance, to tomatoes and peppers. Peppers, tomatoes, they've got a flower, but the male and female plants are in the same flower. So you do not, they are basically called self-pollinated. Yes. Uh, it does uh, help if you wind pollinate or, or um, have got some movement, then it aids in the pollination. But with the butternuts, or the cucurbits, it's very important to have a carrier. So you've got a male and a female flower, they are sit sitting on different parts of the plant, and you need to carry the pollen from the male flower to the female flower now, on the ovary. Now, who's the carrier? That is, in general, we consider bees as the best pollinators, yes. uh, what we call a carrier or pollinator. Um, and you can see, as we stand here, uh, it's quite early in the morning still, so the bees are now getting active. They are getting out of the hives, uh, and this is the best part for pollination during the day. Uh, we consider basically, let's say, from 8 o'clock to uh, maximum t uh, 11 o'clock in the morning. That's the part where your uh, bees are the most active. Otherwise, they, they go further and they don't not necessarily visit the crop. And if they don't pollinate the flower, uh, if they don't carry pollen from the male flower to the female flower, it doesn't get pollinated, that flower then is aborted. Uh, and the flower, uh, the female flower, is only viable to be pollinated uh, for one day. So only uh, one day? Only one day. If you miss, if the bee miss that flower uh, and it's not pollinated due to overcast conditions, extreme heat, uh, any chemical sprays that you might apply and you, you chase away the bees, you will not pollinate that flower. And the, the plant will compensate to a certain extent with uh, flowers later on. Uh, but in c certain uh, situations we see that early fruit set is deteriorated uh, or hampered in the fact that you've got extreme heat conditions or overcast cool conditions in those conditions the bees doesn't work so then you lose your early set um, and so, then you have to uh, so they've got a specific uh, uh, um, almost want to say time slot or the, um, that they actually work in yes what do they do for the rest of the day do they go on like the spanish on a siesta type thing go and just well they, they, lie are, there they, are, they are quite relaxed uh but the 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 they go back to the hive and, and basically relax there uh or they they go for a drink or whatever you know what it's that's typical but the the they need not to say that they are not active during the lot, later part of the day but the most efficient day when they are most active uh, and what you what you will also see is uh, what we found is uh, it's good to have the hives if you have hives to put them close in your field and not to have them far away because the, fl the bee if you've got limited bees they will visit the female flower uh, they will visit the uh, male flower they will pick up pollen carry it to the female flower but then ultimately they also go back to the hive to deposit the pollen there and then only travel back so if the distance from your field to your 
uh, hive is too far. Uh, then it takes too long for the bee to travel and then at a certain stage they don't want to make that effort. So that's why we recommend at least one to two hives So per people hectic. actually introduce hives yes. um, when, when they're serious about uh, um, pollination uh, and uh, to get high yields. Yes. A lot of the farmers claim that they've got uh, natural bee populations and that's fine if you've got that. Uh, most growers that are serious want to achieve high yields they do introduce hives just to make sure that you've got enough flower, uh, not enough bees. Uh, we, we always say that the flower, uh, the female flower, it needs to be visited during that one day that it's open. It needs to be visited by at least nine bees. But at least nine bees. So let's nine say, bees ten, need let's to visit say that. ten bees. So yes. at the end of the day, I need a hell of a lot of bees. Yes. So yes. it is better for me to just introduce those bees because that's something that I can do. I've got control over yes. that in sense. Okay, let's just give give me the best chance of success at the end yes. of the day okay but what are the things that i should not do what shouldn't i do when i go into um, flowering on cucurbits okay well i think the there's there's, there's a lot of uh, external factors like your your climate and all of that that plays a role uh, as i mentioned overcast conditions rainy conditions extreme heat that can play a part but i think the two main things uh, that you can look out for is don't spray any chemicals that's uh, harmful to the bees especially during the morning if yep. you need to spray something you can spray it in the afternoons when the bees are not active you could spray that uh, but don't spray when the bees are active then you can lose that fruit set then also for uh, irrigation uh, especially overhead irrigation don't irrigate that part of the day when the, the bees are most active um, so that's basically what you what the, the farmer can do just to make sure that you don't um, uh, have a negative effect on the pollination. Last thing, how do I know a flower has been pollinated? Okay, uh, you will basically see, uh, even on, on uh, for instance, on the butternuts, you will see that uh, it uh, aborts on a specific stage. And that's at a, at a very uh, early stage, then you will see that the flower, and we'll, we'll show you now the difference between a male and a female flower, but the, the flower will drop from that plant and basically on the butternut it turns yellow and it starts shrinking then you know it hasn't been pollinated and then you can see the subsequent sets luckily for 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 the butternuts if you lose one set it's not critical because the flower the plant will just compensate and it, it will continually set fruit until it set a, a set amount of fruit and it knows that okay i've got an offspring i've produced enough fruit and then it will start slowing down in the uh, the flowering and then it will just basically take that fruit and that it will, will yes take them to ad that adulthood to that's the right yes. way yeah awesome Johan. thank you very much right so that's it um for pollination on cucurbits i've learned a thing or two apparently bees are very very important um look out for our other um, videos in our cicada vegetable production series everything from a to z um, that you want to know about vegetable production to make sure that we get you um, to a proper harvest at the end of the day. Also, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below and we'll also put a link um, down here so that you can um, access Sakata's website and if you've got any other questions, they can get an expert to contact you. This is here from um, yeah, Sakata. Till next time. Cheers. Thanks.